Now factors affecting GFR. This is very important. Please pay higher concentration here. So there are total 13 factors affecting GFR. First, renal blood flow. It is directly proportional to the GFR. Then tubular glomerular feedback, which we studied in the first slide. So in two ways, in two ways it affects the renal blood flow. If sodium chloride concentration increases, then what happens? If sodium chloride concentration increases, then macular denser gets stimulated. It, it secretes adenosine and thromboxane A2, which leads to constriction of efferent arteriole, finally leading to decrease in glomerular blood flow and decrease in GFR. But what if sodium chloride concentration decreases? It again stimulates the macular denser, but here it secretes prostaglandin E2 and bradycanin and E1 renin. So, instead of thromboxane A2, it secretes prostaglandin E2, bradycanin and renin. Whereas prostaglandin E2 and bradycanin leads to dilation of efferent arteriole. Whereas renin works with the angiotensin, renin angiotensin system and produces angiotensinogen 2 which leads to constriction of efferent arteriole and finally it increases the, increases the glomerular blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. Now third, glomerular capillary pressure. It is directly proportional to the GFR. As we studied it in a previous slide that glomerular capillary pressure favors the GFR. Now colloidal osmotic pressure and hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman's capsule. They both are indirectly proportional to GFR and they oppose the GFR. Then constriction of efferent arteriole and it is also indirectly proportional to the GFR. Then constriction of efferent arteriole, it favors the GFR. Initially, it favors the GFR. So initially GFR increases and when there is no fresh blood, after it enters the glomerulus for filtration so after that there is no fresh blood but initially gfr increases but in future further there is no fresh blood then gfr decreases then eighth systemic arterial pressure systemic arterial pressure so if there is no change in the gfr if bp is between 60 to 180 mmg but if bp if blood pressure is above 180 mg or below 60 mg then it will definitely affect the GFR. Then ninth, sympathetic arterial pressure. If there is mild or moderate change then no change in the GFR will occur. But if there is uh, severe symp sympathetic stimulation then contraction of efferent will occur more and contraction of efferent will occur less but contraction will occur and this will lead to increase in GFR initially and later decrease. After 30 minutes of the continuous stimulation, GFR will become back to normal due to reduction in neurotransmitter. So initially what will happen in severe sympathetic system, there will be contraction of the arteriole. If efferin and efferin arteriole, this will lead to increase in GFR which will later decrease and in 30 minutes stimulation, after 30 minutes continuous stimulation, GFR will become back to normal. Why? Because there will be decrease in neurotransmitter. Now 10th point, 10th factor, surface area. So surface area of the capillary membrane is directly proportional to the GFR. More will be the surface membrane, more will be the filtrate surface area of the membrane more will be the filtrate then 11 permeability of the capillary membrane so more will be the permeable membrane more will be the filtrate so it is directly proportional now conditions like hypoxia lack of blood supply and presence of toxic uh, products in such conditions the permeability increases now plasma protein gets filtrated and excreted in such conditions now Contraction of glomerular messenger cell. It decreases the surface area which reduces the GFR. So, contraction of glomerular messenger cells. It decreases the surface area and reduces the GFR. Now, hormones. There are two types of hormones affecting 
the GFR, one are vasodilator and one are vasoconstrictor. So vasodilator does vasodilation function and vasoconstrictor does vasoconstriction function. So vasodilation is performed by ANP, BNP, CMP, dopamine, prostaglandin E2 and epithelial derived nitrous oxide. Whereas vasoconstriction is done by angiotensin 2, endothins, noradrenaline, platelet activating factor, platelet derived growth factor and prostaglandin E2. This is where we end this topic.